It was a typical day in Hendley, where people chat with everyone they meet and wish them a pleasant day, with the exception of Cole. Cole, a 27-year-old scientist, aspired to be clever and invent things that were previously unimaginable to humanity. They can be tough at times, but they were consistently cruel with Cole. Let's just say, Cole is different from the rest of the people around him. His abode featured long drapes that were never tied, as he seemed to prefer it dark and cold. His automobile was caked in dust, and his lawn had long grass that you had to walk through to get to his door. In broad daylight, no one ever sees him. But maybe ten years ago, when he said hello to a young girl, Cole was judged, treated badly, and classified like a pickled cucumber on that day. He'd wanted to be invisible since that day, to stroll around with no one noticing him. Cole set out on a mission to construct an invisibility cloak or suit. It was a difficult technique to master. Cole discovered and created a light bending thin sheet of material. Quantum Stealth is the name he gave it. It operates with all visible light wavelengths and generates a blind spot in the middle by bending light from all sides towards the viewer. With enthusiasm and determination, he crafted his masterpiece. People believe it's impossible, but Cole has proven that invisibility isn't simply a fiction of his imagination. He finally finished the outfit and tested its strength and effectiveness. He closed his eyes and drew his arms in slowly, covering every inch of his body. He took a quick look to see if it worked. His eyes widened as he realized what he had found. He went back and forth, moving his hands to inspect for defects. It was successful. It was a huge success. Cole <laughs> chuckled maniacally, as if he were a sociopath or a mad scientist. His mind was bursting at the seams with ideas and plans. He is capable of many feats that no man is capable of. He was undetected. He considered breaking into a movie theater downtown and getting a free movie for the rest of his life. He even considered stealing a bank. His money problems might be solved in a flash. Then like a child with a light bulb on his head, he paused and stood up, a grin painted on his face. That's it, Cole exclaimed. He plotted the entire scheme while waiting outside the bank alongside the security guard. He took a close look inside, keeping an eye on every employee and locating all of the keys he'd need to get into the vault. Daylight faded away, and darkness reigned supreme throughout the city. Cole was already inside the bank when he grabbed the keys and walked into the vault as if it were his own home. Cole's bank heist made headlines around town. Authorities are on the lookout for the perpetrator and they've examined every street corner and every home. Cole was the least likely of the bunch because no one saw him leave his premises. They assumed he was unable to do so, or so they thought. He spent his days counting the money he had stashed in his room. It was all over his residence, in his bed, plate, and drawers, as if it had poured money. He was undecided about what to do next. He still undecided on what to do next, despite the several things he imagines he can do. A bunch of attractive girls passed by his house as he sat on his chair, contemplating. They were in their 20s, with supple skin, smooth hair, well-planned outfits, and a pleasant aroma. He was staring at them and he was practically drooling. Cole has little experience mingling or even having an intimate relationship because, well, he was treated as a misfit. I'm curious as to what else I can see through those clothes. Cole pondered. He imagined how lovely and soft it must be in his hands as they undressed. From that point forth, he devised a new strategy. He's not stealing a bank this time though. He dashed outdoors, donning his invisibility cloak. Cole followed the girls home and took down the addresses of each girl he followed. He returned home with a paper in his pocket and a fascinated mind. Cole began his strategy the next day, one girl at a time. Every night, he crept in and sat in the corner of the room, waiting for his prey. He hears footsteps going up the stairs as the front door closes. The first female entered the room, and she appeared to be drunk. He can detect the scent of a concoction made up of alcohol and perfume. It was addicting for him. He sat there, watching her strip down to her underwear and unveil herself to Cole. The girl took a shower after grabbing a towel. 
Cole went into the restroom with her. It was his first encounter with a naked girl. Of course, he's no stranger to porn, but seeing a naked girl is a whole other level. Her nip was pink, her breasts were the perfect size, and her contours were like a carved masterpiece. Cole couldn't take it any longer and waited for the girl to finish. He waited, then drew out a piece of chloroform-soaked cloth and assaulted his prey. The girl screamed for a few seconds before passing out in her bed. Cole removed his coat and returned his gaze to the girl. He touched her skin. Oh, how it tingles his entire body. He wanted to bite into her flesh because it was so soft. Cole kissed her lips while unconscious, yet he relished every moment. He was on top of her, his manhood probing every pore of her body. Cole went on to his next target after knocking the girl out that night. She felt it was sleep paralysis when she awoke the next day. Cole took advantage of eight girls and counting after that night. He was having so much fun that his body was begging for more. The girls, on the other hand, were beginning to believe it was not a dream, as all of their experiences seemed to match, and they can recall the final thing that happened before they passed out. It's weird, but I feel like it's more than a dream, a girl said. The last thing I remember, someone or something covered my mouth. Me too, agreeing in unison. Cole heard everything from his room and decided to put his plans on hold for the time being. Another piece of news stunned the entire town as the days went into months. It quickly spread like wildfire. Cole was taken aback when he learned that a female was pregnant. On the other side, the girl was perplexed and unsure of what to do. She thought it was merely sleep paralysis at first, but it turned out to be real. The residents of the town buzzed like bees everywhere they went. Everyone was disturbed by the news and decided to take matters into their own hands. The best way to know the culprit is to wait till the baby is brought out, a man suggested. She can have its DNA checked, then we'll hang the devil. Everyone agreed to wait. Cole knew the risks, but he was so confident with the power he holds. They can't catch me, with a sly face. I possess the invisibility they thought was unattainable. I can vanish right before their eyes. I have the ability to sleep with as many girls as I desire. No one is going to be able to stop me. Cole sat in his chair, recalling the girl to whom he had greeted hello a few years ago. She lives just a few blocks away from him. Claire is her name. Oh, sweet young Claire. Yes, she'll do just fine for tonight. He walked straight to Claire's house, dressed in his suit, and invited himself in. She was living alone. No parents or guardians to stop Cole for tonight. It was a brilliant scheme and a pleasurable retaliation for humiliating him previously. The sound of footsteps entering the house drew his attention. He looked around and saw Claire. Claire was scrutinizing every inch of her room. He could tell she was being cautious. Maybe to do of the local news. It'll be pretty quick, my dear Claire. I promise you, he said in a low voice. Cole like the rest of the girls, kept a tight eye on Claire. Claire is a one-of-a-kind lady who stands out among the previous females. The sensation of licking every inch of her body was unlike anything he'd ever had before. Cole attacked Claire with a chloroform-soaked towel after she finished washing. He is clearly enjoying the viability of the situation as she lay unconscious in bed. As he ran his hands through her hair, he noticed how smooth each strand was. Claire, we're going to have a great time tonight. I wish you were awake and able to appreciate the joy. Cole removed his coat first, then his clothes. He was stripped down to his underwear and stood in front of Claire's bed. He climbed on top of her and stripped her off her soaking shower towel. Her skin reeked of vanilla, and he was as if an addict, sniffing every inch of her. But Cole jumped away just as he was going to kiss her. His face became flushed. <sighs> So it was never a sleep paralysis, Claire said, not even weakened by the chloroform he used on her. Cole froze in place, unsure of what to do next. He double-checked that there was enough chloroform to put her to sleep. How did this happen? Cole reached for the bedside lamp, but she beat him to it. She yanked him out of the bed and tossed the white blankets aside, revealing his figure. Cole was no longer so hidden. I was wondering who'd create such an invention. Claire spoke to him. I have an idea. But first... I have to see your face to confirm it. Claire groped for his face, 
but he yanked the covers away from his body, rendering him invisible and untraceable once again. Claire had lost sight of him and had no idea where he was, because it's hard to find what you can't see. He assumed she'd given up. Claire took something from the drawer beside her bed, a bottle in particular. She felt a pressure on the carpet while doing so. It appeared as if someone was standing on it. You're in the perfect spot, douchebag. She sprayed paint directly into his face in the blink of an eye. Her eyes widened as she took in what she was seeing. Cole? The paint blinded him. It was painful. He can't even manage to keep his eyes open. Claire was glaring at him. This is for all the girls you took advantage of! Hitting him with a lamp. You ruined them! For what, Cole? For your own manly desires and selfishness? Cole was on the verge of passing out when he collapsed to the floor, but he quickly jumped up and fled out of the room. Claire chased after him, shouting so loudly that her neighbors could hear her. He's here! Help! The culprit is here in my house! He couldn't see anything, and the room was already pitch black. Another stroke hit him. He fell again, this time hitting his head against the wall. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. He pleaded. Say that to the girl you got pregnant and the rest of the girls you raped. Claire responded. Claire pulled out a knife and was about to stab him when he realized what was happening. Cole rolled to the other side of the room and noticed the door. He leaped to his feet and dashed as quickly as he could. Claire's voice was heard by the rest of the neighbors who witnessed him leave the house. They were all ready to assault him. Cole dashed across the road at breakneck speed. When he got almost to the opposite side, he felt like he was about to lose them. He was so concentrated in getting away that he failed to notice the truck. The truck had already hit him before he could even turn around. His body was disassembled, his bones were crushed, and his face was deformed by the force of the crash. The people chasing him was looking to what is left of Cole, including Claire. They were sorry for him, but mostly relieved because of the idea that he's gone and the nuisance was done and resolved. A scientist who wished to be invisible is now resting in his grave beside his work. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.